students uh, welcome to experimental techniques and material characterization lecture number 14 uh, I'm dr. Parvez Ahmed uh, in this lectures uh, we will continue our discussions on uh, transmission electron microscopy uh, that in short we call TAM uh, this is part 2 of the lecture uh, so uh, today's topic is uh, diffraction contrast and uh, TAM so let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture that is uh, diffraction contrast and TAM so uh, what it mean by the diffraction contrast uh, so you know about the diffractions and uh, uh, x-ray diffractions uh, technique uh, that in short we call uh, XRE uh, so we won't start the discussions from the, the the formal technique the formal laws that deal with the uh, with the diffractions that we have in the case of the x-ray diffractions so we we will just start the discussions from uh, uh, what actually uh, uh, should be the main point or the main point of concern uh, that is the electrons uh, you know that and uh, transmission electron microscopy uh, the things goes around uh, the electron so you know that uh, electron has a, a wave like properties uh, so uh, just because of that uh, electron can be diffracted by crystalline uh, specimens so the resultant diffraction patterns are uh, given formations about the crystal structure of the specimens so uh, a typical uh, diffraction patterns uh, uh, I mean in this particular case you can see it here is of carbon uh, 60 and is shown here so this is a particular diffraction patterns uh, by utilizing the feature and transmission electron uh, microscope so this is the, the pattern the diffraction patterns uh, belong to carbon uh, 60 so it's shown here and you can easily visualize that what that how the diffraction pattern the transmission electron microscopy look like so the diffraction can uh, diffraction patterns can be recorded in two ways uh, so what are those two ways uh, by mean of which we can uh, record the diffraction pattern the time so the first is uh, by inserting a selected area aperture uh, just like we mentioned in the previous uh, in the previous lecture on the last uh, slide that we can record a diffraction patterns uh, and that is very simple uh, what actually we have to do uh, just uh, we need to exert insert a selected area aperture and the second is uh, by focusing the beam onto a small region of the specimen so there there are two uh, main techniques uh, for getting diffraction patterns and transmission electron microscopy one is by inserting selected area aperture and second is uh, focusing the beam uh, onto a small region of the specimen so both of these technique uh, we will discuss uh, in this lecture and the uh, later slide so uh, let us proceed towards uh, the diffraction uh, contrast uh, so you can see that the most important contrast uh, mechanism for the crystalline material is the diffraction contrast and the one particular you can see it here on uh, this figure so to produce a diffraction uh, contrast uh, the first technique that we mentioned on the previous slide uh, is uh, the objective uh, aperture I mean uh, uh, the insertions uh, of the objective aperture or we can say that uh, to produce a diffraction contrast uh, the objective aperture is placed around the central beams and the uh, diffraction uh, pattern so uh, with the help of that uh, we can easily get the uh, uh, we can easily get the diffraction patterns uh, from transmission electron uh, microscope so that is the first point uh, that how we can get the diffraction pattern uh, in the transmission electron uh, microscopy that is uh, we place uh, the, the simple way or the first technique or the first option is to uh, uh, I mean to uh, place objective aperture around the central beam uh, so with that uh, we can get the diffraction patterns and the transmission electron uh, microscopy so how it would be uh, so here you can see the sketch uh, and the sketch that how uh, you have to place a diaphragm uh, the objective apertures uh, for getting the uh, diffraction pattern from the electron so here in this sketch you can see that I mean it's the the, the main beam of the electron is the 
uh, here uh, I mean is the incident uh, electron beam with intensity equals to 1 so this is the specimens and here you can see the objective lenses so by putting here uh, the objective aperture uh, you can see that uh, what actually happened uh, with the uh, with the beam so here we can see uh, one beam is the diffracted uh, and the other one is the direct uh, the direct beam so the effect of introducing the objective aperture uh, which you can see it here is to exclude uh, the scattered beam i uh, means uh, we we have introduced this aperture objective aperture so the purpose for introducing uh, this uh, objective aperture is to exclude the scattered beams and this has been illustrated here so the result uh, what's the result of that uh, once you uh, introduce the objective aperture so uh, the regions of the specimens with scattered electrons will appear dark in the image and that we will explain further here uh, uh, in the coming slide again so uh, uh, here uh, we should we should first mention about the bright field image and the dark field image so first uh, let's focus about the bright field imaging so be remember only mean uh, only uh, i mean for getting the bright field imaging so for that purpose only uh, uh, main beam is used. I mean for getting the bright field image. Uh, so for that purpose uh, we use only the uh, uh, the main beam. I mean here you can see that uh, it's the direct air the main beam and it's the diffracted beam. So now for getting the uh, for, uh, for bright field imaging. Uh, so we remember for that particular purpose we only use the main beam and aperture is back focal plane uh, that block diffracted beam. So image contrast mainly due to the subtraction uh, of intensity for the main beam by uh, diffraction. So here an example you can see, uh, I mean for the dislocations, uh, I mean here in this example, uh, we, we have just analyzed the dislocations with the, uh, with the help of the uh, diffractions. Uh, so here uh, you can clarify your concern. So is the main beam, uh, so main beam uh, is being utilized uh, for getting the a bright field image and here you uh, you can see that uh, I mean uh, we get a dark uh, the dark beam so uh, I mean from here on you can utilize uh, that why uh, we get with the dark uh, why we get we get the dark uh, the dark field image or why or why or how we get the bright field image so here for the bright field image uh, we, we mainly utilize uh, the main beam and here for the dark uh, we utilize uh, the diffracted beam and here you can see again uh, we have uh, a direct beam or the main beam so here we get uh, a bright field image but here is a dark field image so dark field image uh, you, you can easily uh, i mean visualize or you can visually uh, uh, see by yourself that the beam is diffracted here so with the help of that diffraction we get uh, the dark uh, the dark field image you can you can check that in other uh, uh, another example that is uh, we have two crystal in a sample so uh, these two crystals i mean you can see it here uh, the arrangement of the plane so here uh, i mean uh, you again can visualize uh, you again can check your concept so uh, the direct beam you can see that with the direct or with the main, uh, with the main beam you can see uh, we get the bright uh, field image but with the diffracted one, uh, here you can see that uh, we get uh, the dark uh, field uh, image. So another uh, example, example number third, the BAM uh, contours. So with the band contours again, uh, you can check your concept of uh, dark field image and bright uh, field image. So here you can see again, uh, mean it's the main uh, image. Uh, and from here on you can you can check I mean here you can see the dark and the bright uh, side or the bright places so here you can see that uh, band contours and here you can see the dark uh, in the darkness because of the diffraction and here you can see the bright uh, due to man man beam and again you can see it is the dark and a bright uh, bright field image so with that I think you, you have clarified your concept that why we are getting uh, bright field image or dark field image uh, in the, uh, the diffraction pattern.
So, here uh, I mean sometimes we get uh, alternating dark and bright uh, fringes. So, what is the reason for that? So, here you can see also the reason for that. I mean uh, sometimes we have uh, I mean uh, the thickness fringes. I mean this is the example of the thickness fringes. So, here you can see I mean uh, we get the bright I mean here it's a direct beam or main beam uh, we get a bright and here we get a, uh, a bright but here you can see that uh, we have a direct beam uh, but in between uh, we have something we, we have a furniture uh, or whatever you can suggest uh, so uh, with that I mean the, though it's beam uh, in the uh, in the path of the electrons uh, main beam but here the, the beam is not diffracted I mean you can see that it's, again it's a direct beam so as a result, uh, we will get alternative dark and uh, light uh, fringes uh, and the situation will look like this. So what else uh, is in the image? Uh, so uh, we have many uh, interfacts uh, that is uh, uh, we have surface film, uh, local contaminations, uh, differential uh, thinning uh, and along with that so many other things. And with the help of that, we can also get changes in the image uh, because of annealing due to uh, heating by uh, the beam. I mean, so when we have the electron, uh, we, we have the diffraction from the electron beam. So just because of that, uh, you know, that heat can be generated. And just because of that, we, we, we have some sort of the annealing uh, due to uh, the heating by uh, the beam. So, uh, I mean, you already class, uh, clar uh, clarify your concept of the uh, bright field image. So now let's focus a bit about uh, the dark field image. That how we can get the dark field image. So here we have uh, we we have shown the sketch. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the the internal situation inside the transmission electron microscope. That how we can get the uh, the dark field image. So uh, instead of uh, main beam, uh, we use a diffracted beam. I mean, the key concept, the key thing for getting a dark uh, field image uh, is that we use a diffracted beam. So unlike, uh, I mean, it's unlike the uh, the bright field imaging uh, where we utilize the main beam. So the key difference between the dark field and uh, the bright field image is that for bright field, uh, we use the main beam of the electron and for the dark field, uh, we use a diffracted beam. So what actually we do, we just move a uh, furniture to a diffracted beam or tell the incident beam. So here you can see the situation. This is the first situation. Uh, you know about all the other thing. I mean, this is the specimens, the objective lenses and uh, the furniture. So this is the first situation uh, you can see that uh, and you already know from your pr previous knowledge about uh, the bright field imaging. So in case of bright field imaging, you know that uh, we mainly utilize uh, the main beam. So by, by getting the main beam, uh, uh, by utilizing the main beam, we get the bright field. So here, uh, this is the situation. Uh, this is the situation for uh, getting the bright field uh, image and the uh, transmission electron microscopy. So uh, we mentioned about the dark field imaging here. That is, in case of the dark field image, uh, we use the diffracted beam instead of the main beam. So here is the situation. I mean, here are the situation is the main beam, and uh, this is the diffracted beam. So this diffracted beam is used uh, for getting the dark field uh, imaging. And here you see the situation will be like this. So this is the situation for the bright field imaging. And now this is the situations for uh, the dark field imaging. And the key reason is uh, we utilize for dark, uh, be, uh, for dark field imaging, uh, we, we have utilized the diffracted beam. So this is the diffracted uh, beam. Diffracted beam is utilized to get uh, the dark field image. Uh, so uh, that, that we have only mentioned on the previous slide that how we will be able to get uh, the dark field image. And here is another situation. Here you can see that again, uh, I mean, it's, it's a, a central uh, uh, central dark field. So with the certain dark, uh, dark field again, uh, we, we have 
uh, utilized i mean hey you can see that uh, we have moved a furniture uh, uh, i mean uh, move a furniture to diffracted beam or tell the incident beam so we have tell the incident beam uh, so with that i mean by moving the uh, 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 moving or tell the incident beam so with the incident uh, i mean to, to to tell the incident beam so with that uh, we will get uh, central uh, dark field so here you can see the central uh, dark field so the central uh, the central dark field is being uh, obtained uh, with the help of telt uh, incident uh, b so i think uh, with that you 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 might have uh, uh, fully understand the concept of the uh, diffraction contrast and transmission electron microscopy so that's all we have for this lecture uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next lecture. The next lecture we will discuss about the transmission electron uh, microscopy. Uh, but that lecture will be about the specimen preparation for the time. So stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.